She was the epitome of love. Garnell Whitfield says there's a hole in his heart. His mother, Ruth, was the oldest victim in Saturday's shooting. She had just visited her husband at a nearby nursing home. My mother was an angel. My mother was, uh, she was my mother. <laughs> you know, you can't replace your mother. Whitfield says the family can't bring themselves to break the news to his father. We don't know how he, how he will take this news. Like so many here, his family's anger is focused on the suspect. Today, police confirmed the alleged gunman visited the store two months earlier, mapping out the deadly attack. This is white supremacy, it's racism, it's terrorism, and it's being perpetuated against us, against people of color. The hatred that visited this community has left a deep scar. For him to take all those lives at 18, with so much hate in his heart, so much hate in his heart, like, uh, how do you hate people that much and do that? All 10 victims have been identified, including 72-year-old Kat Massey, who last year wrote to the local paper calling for action to address gun violence, and 67-year-old Hayward Patterson, a deacon who shuttled people to and from the store. The only place to get fresh food in the area, it was more than a grocery store, making the attack all the more devastating. He knew that it was an important hub, but there's more like him. There's more like him across these United States of America. As the family of Ruth Whitfield fought back tears, Civil rights lawyer Ben Crump called for accountability. What happened on Saturday was an act of domestic terrorism. And we have to define it as such. Garnell and his family said they want to channel their anger into change. What are you willing to do so that the next time it's not you standing here before your broken hearted family? He took away my mother and my best friend. How dare you? Okay, so Stephen, officials gave an update on the investigation. What more did they have to say? They gave us a chilling new detail that if the suspect hadn't been caught, he had planned to continue his shooting at other locations in this area. They also talked today about his large digital footprint. Uh, we've heard a lot about the suspect's alleged manifesto, but there are also other online posts believed to be from the gunman dating back months, and they essentially read like a digital diary, and they provide a lot of information about his mindset, about his tactics, and his motives, and if they are to be believed, essentially lay out his path to radicalization. Andrew? Stephen D'Souza in Buffalo, New York. Thank you.